everybody doing? I'm supposed to say awesome. All right. Well, what is this? Four straight weeks of beautiful sunshine. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for that. Sunday morning, you can't beat that. Uh, I got a couple verses for you of encouragement this morning. Uh, you know, we got to think about in these difficult times what we're, what we're holding on to, what we're putting our faith and trust in. You see, as believers, our faith and trust should be in the Lord Jesus Christ, our future in heaven, right? Amen? Sometimes we get a little bit guilty of putting our faith and trust in other things, like our income and our government and our safety and all those things. That's not where it's at. Faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is where it's at. So we got a couple references for you. Uh, uh, it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will make straight your paths. Deuteronomy 31, 8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And then Job 11, 18 and 19, you will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid and many will court your favor. So I hope that we can remember as believers to hold on to the Lord. That is where our safety is. That is where our security is. Can you guys stand with us? We're going to sing an old song called I Am. There's no space that his love can reach. There's no place where we can find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your arms spread wide. Take me in like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave my side. It's a promise.
This is my resurrection song. This is my hallelujah call. This is why it's to you I run. This is my resurrection song. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. Sometimes I feel like that, don't I? And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. Can I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross and there's no birth. Another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my debt left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning. Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. Should I ever 
other name. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in this space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Journey Ministries. It is a beautiful Sunday. As Nathan says, it's our fourth Sunday outside with amazing weather. So let's praise God for that. Um, so a couple of things going on this week. Uh, Jennifer, Dave, and I have made a communion video. This Sunday was, is communion Sunday, but obviously with the current state of everything and passing around communion plates, we decided that it would be easier to make a video so that you guys can take it in your own home and your own comfort space with your family and take that and remember the, the sacrifice of Jesus on your own. Uh, a couple things, too, to remember this week. We are only doing the Tuesday night service here at Journey. We're not doing the Thursday night, um, and we have decided not to do that into July just because the numbers were low and we want to be able to best serve you guys. So just Tuesday night this week, we'll have it here at the Journey Center. And Journey Kids too, right, Jennifer? Yeah, awesome. And then tonight also is high school youth group at the Rhines. Super excited. It's our second meeting back uh, as we go into the summer. I'm really excited about that. So uh, at this time, we're going to take up our offering. Uh, we're doing things a little bit differently. You can have the blue tube over there and you can put your offering in or you can give online at journeymen.org or you can uh, send in a check to Journey Ministries. So let's pray as we take up our offering. God, I thank you so much for this amazing weather this Sunday, uh, the, this amazing place that we can come and worship you regardless of where we are, whether we're in a school, we're outside in a building, wherever we are, you're here, you're present. And God, I just ask that uh, everything that we do with these funds that are given to us, everything that we do is for your glory, not our own, but to help others that need it, to, to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this community and beyond, to the world. So Father, I thank you so much for all that you're doing in this community, in this church. I love you, Lord. Amen.
the trees and love is deeper than the deep seas warmer than the warmest southern breeze your love is higher than the trees your love is deeper than the deep seas warmer than
Let us pray real quick. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your Holy Spirit that is filling this place for your presence, God. And I ask today that it may not be my words, but yours. And so, Father, I ask that uh, we learn more about how we talk to you, how we pray to you, and how we continue to communicate with you. We love you, Father. Amen. Well, so uh, Dave pulled like a vocal muscle or something, so I got called up to the majors, so here I am. I'm just kidding. He's fine. I'm just here. That was a bad joke. You were supposed to laugh. Never mind. I'm going to start writing better jokes next time. Uh, but I want to tell you guys today, we're going to talk about praying bold prayers. And so I'm going to tell you a quick story. Back when I was a teenager at camp, um, one of the things that we always had was a Friday night where we went crazy. We did some fun stuff because the whole week, you know, we were learning about Jesus, which some of us found that boring for some reason, which it shouldn't have been. But we were excited for Friday night because they'd pull pranks on each other. We had this bell that we would ring for like everything, like meals, games, whatever. It was the most annoying thing ever. So we'd steal the dinger out of that and hide it so they couldn't get us to come to things. So things like that would happen all the time. One time the dinger got put in a truck and the truck drove away and was gone for the rest of the week. Things like that would happen. So my uncle, who's actually a twin of my dad, which there's actually really funny stories about that because they'll see my uncle kissing his, like, his wife, and people would think my dad's cheating on my mom, and that's not true. <laughs> so it's really awkward sometimes. But anyways, my uncle was in charge of food for that night for the guys, and so he would always get pizza or something for us, so we were super excited, and that year he forgot to get pizza, and so we were very mad at him. So we obviously started revolting and wanted to figure something out. So my parents were actually 30 minutes away staying somewhere, so I called them up and I was like, listen, Uncle Mike forgot the pizza. He's letting us down. We're so disappointed. Can you help us? Can you go to McDonald's and get like 25 cheeseburgers and McChickens? And they're like, no, we're not doing that. It's midnight. <laughs> and so obviously that's something that I knew was going to happen. They were probably going to say no. So what did we do? We got on our knees and we prayed. We prayed a very bold prayer that God would change my parents' hearts and literally two minutes after we said amen, my parents called me and said, what do you want? How many do you need? And that is the night that I'll never forget. Now, those aren't necessarily the bold prayers that I really want you to think about praying today. But I want us to look back in the scripture and see some of the bold prayers that the disciples prayed. So this is in Acts chapter 4. Uh, I'll start in verse 1. I don't have it on the screen just because there's a lot to it. So I'm kind of going to summarize the first 20 verses. So basically what's happening is Peter and John... They're in a, a town, they're preaching the name of Jesus, they're preaching God, they're preaching the resurrection of Jesus, and the Sanhedrin came and, and took them away and said, no, that, that's awful, you cannot be doing that, you know, classic Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin, classic Sadducees and Pharisees trying to stir up the pot, and so what they do is they take them away, they put them into prison, they beat them a little bit, because again, they're jerks, and so what they do is they see the miracles that had happened through Peter and John. So, so they brought Peter and John up, to, up front in the court, and, and they brought someone who was, who was hurt and was lame. And so they brought him forward, and Peter and John prayed over this, this, this individual, and they were healed. And so the Sanhedrin kind of had nothing to do. They had nothing to say. They had seen a miracle of God in front of their eyes. And so what happened is the Sanhedrin said to Peter and John, all right, you're out of here, but don't go preaching the name of Jesus anymore. Don't go out into our streets doing that. And so that's when we pick up here in verse 23. It says, as soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them that the leading priests and elders had said, when they had heard their report, all the believers uh, lifted their voices together in prayer to God. So real quick, as we stop that, Let's stop on verse 24. We see that the first instinct of Peter and John is not to necessarily talk and talk for hours about what had happened and things that had taken place. They probably updated their elders and their people that were around them on what happened and what took place. But they stopped and they said, guys, we need to pray. Because we can't do this on our own strength. We can't go forward. We can't be preaching the name of Jesus on our own strength. And so picking up here in verse 25, 
It says, they, they pray, O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David. Your servant saying, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and the Messiah. And so, uh, excuse me, in verse 28 too, I'm going to add that on there. Lost my spot. And it said also in verse 27 and 28, in fact, this is what has happened here in this very city. Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united together against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. So that chunk there, they're praying about the, the things that had happened in the Old Testament, how the prophets had been killed for, for, for preaching what God had, had told them to do, how Jesus had these people like Herod and Pontius Pilate and, and all of these things that were trying to stop him from doing the will of God. And so they're going back and they're praying through all these people that, that had tried to stop the will of God and they're praying through that. And I was, we move on here real quick. This prayer that they pray is so bold. It's so courageous. And what it is is a cry for courage. So picking up in verse 29, and now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hands. With healing power, may miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. The, the part that gets me in that prayer is the fact that they're like, Lord, hear their threats. Hear the threats of the Sanhedrin. Hear the threats of, of Herod and Pontius Pilate and all before them. You've seen them, God. You've heard them. But God, give us courage to get past that. Give us courage to get past all of the junk that is in front of us and pray boldly to you for courage to, to preach your name, to preach the resurrection of Jesus, to, to love the people that are in front of us. And they knew that they couldn't do that on their own. But when they, when they prayed these prayers, when they prayed this boldness, over their congregation, over their church, the place shook. God was revealed. His Holy Spirit was revealed. And they preached the word of God with boldness. And, and so reading through this, di doing some research, many scholars believe that the very place that they were told not to preach, they went right back to that place and they preached the name of Jesus. How amazing is that? I mean, if I was kicked out of like, I don't know, a place for that, I definitely, my first instinct would not to be to go back and to do that. I don't even need those anyways. That's fine. And so, why would you do that? Why would you have those instincts to want to go back? But they had that boldness from the Holy Spirit. They had that boldness from God. I want to send this to, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. It says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus. To be joyful with God is to be in communication with Him. You see, if, you probably heard this before, but if we never talk to somebody, how can you say that you're friends with them? How can you say that you have a relationship with them? I mean, yeah, maybe communication's a little different. I feel like we all communicate differently. I literally hate texting sometimes. It's one of my least favorite things, so I'm sorry for those of you that may have texted me before and I didn't get back right away. But <laughs> I'm just, you know, putting my sins out in front of you guys. But, uh, but you know, there's different ways that we communicate but the, the same way that we communicate is with God through prayer. And, and, and Pastor Dave asked the question a week or two ago, who wants to pray more to God? Who feels like they need to pray more to God? And I feel like most of us here would say that. Most Christians would say that, right? The big, the big times that we pray to God is for meals, <laughs> in the morning, at night, maybe when something's wrong. But what is the difference between those prayers and bold prayers? 
right? In 1 Thessalonians, it says to never stop praying, to pray without ceasing. And praying bold prayers is not necessarily just these eloquent prayers of, oh, Heavenly Father, God, a bunch of words that I don't know how to pronounce. Like, it's, it's not that. It's not all these things that are just like, like this amazing summary of your thoughts. It's, it's a prayer for courage. Whether it's a situation that you're walking through, whether it's a situation your friend's walking through, whatever it is, right? When I was kind of researching this week, through this sermon, I, I stumbled upon this old prayer journal of mine from college. Uh, I used to pray, write my prayers down, because, again, I'm not like, I wasn't the best at praying out loud to God, so I would write them down and then pray through them. And I remember just looking back and being like, man, I used to keep this list every day of, like, of people that needed prayer, people that were hurting, and I, I would keep that, and I would pray through that. And, and it made me think, how many times a day do I say, hey, I'll pray for you? Hey, I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. That's awful. I'll pray for you. How many times do we actually stop and we actually pray for that, that situation, that person, that, 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 that thing that we see that someone's struggling with or hurting? So I just remember, like, wow, why have I not been doing this all the time? I mean... I try my best to pray for somebody on the, on the spot, right? But it, it convicted me, right? It convicted me like, wow. I, I kept track one day this week of how many times that someone was hurting. Not necessarily that they asked for prayer, whether it was on social media or in person, but that there was definitely a situation that I could be praying for. And I marked it down, and it was like 27 different things in one day. And a few of the, like probably half of those, somebody reached out on Facebook or somebody said in person, hey, can you be praying for me? Hey, can you be praying for me? And so when we sit down and we, we spend our time with God, are we just stuck in this prayer of God, thanks for today. God, you're great. Help me figure out this financial thing. You got this, blah, blah, blah. Or is it God? You're here. I invite your presence into to my life. I invite your presence into this space. And God, move in the ways that you need to move. God, give me courage to help those that need the, 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 have these struggles. Give me courage to help the people around me. Give me hope that is only from you. It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing when we can sit down and pray bold prayers, Right? So when I was in college, we had this ministry, ironically, called Bold, and it was a, a, a place that we would sit down, and we would just pray for like an hour, right? And we'd, we'd hear all these things this week. We would come with different things that we heard from the week of people that needed prayer, people that needed healing, different things, and we would just sit there for an hour and just pray. And like the most awkward thing in the whole world is when someone's like, all right, pray out, and everyone's just silent. Because everyone never knows what to pray, and everyone never knows what to say to God because they're afraid that, you know, maybe we'll be judged or we'll be <laughs> kind of seen in a different light, not as spiritual as each other, right? But I think one of the most amazing things we can do is step out and just speak because it's not us. It shouldn't be us necessarily that's, that's worried about saying the right things to God, the one who created us. He has wisdom. He has hope. He has love for us. So how can we communicate better to him? It's by just speaking our thoughts, having a conversation with God. Dave talks about that all the time. He, he, he says, you know, prayer is just a conversation with God. It's like if I had a conversation with Nathan or, or, or Pastor Dave about something for this week, right? God, this is what's going on in my life, and I know that you're the author of my life. I know that you're my creator, so God, this is what's going on in my week. You lay those things at his feet. That is what a bold prayer is. You, you lay down your, your feelings, your heart at his feet. And so when I think about this world right now with everything that's going on, all the different things that we have 
had to battle through, not just as a church, but as, as humans in these last four or five months. I hope that we can act like the disciples did in Acts 4. That they push aside the things that were, could be distractions, that they push aside the things that could be hurting them. And they pray God to God for boldness and for courage to step out into those situations that we're facing, to step out into this world that we're facing, and to bring the hope of Jesus with us. Because we're not supposed to stop praying. We're supposed to pray for each other, to build each other up in this, in this church, in, in, in this community. One of the most amazing things of the early church is that it was built on prayer. The foundation of the, the, the church of Acts was built on the prayer of boldness for the church to move into these different parts of the world. I mean, we see even nowadays the churches and places that, I mean, years ago, people were getting killed, missionaries, and still missionaries are getting killed every day for the sharing the name of Jesus, but we're in places like China in the Middle East where, where Jesus isn't really welcomed anymore, <laughs> or it never really was. But yet they have boldness, those missionaries, they have boldness, and we too can have that boldness if we continue to, to spend time with God in prayer, spend time in his boldness, and spending time asking for courage to, to share the hope of Jesus. And so, what I want you guys to take home today is to ask yourselves, just, just look at how much we pray to God every day. Just take kind of a, a chart, just spend a day like, okay, how many times have I prayed to God today? How many times have I, what, have, what am I asking for? Where's my heart? Am I just asking God to help me? Or am I asking God to help others? Am I asking God to, to, to heal those that are broken? Am I asking God to help my church? Am I asking God for us to, to, to move our church forward? Am I, all these different things, there's so many things. It, it, prayer is just not about us. It's about him. It's about the conversation that we have, that the church has, that us as Christians have with God, because if we never, ever talk to him, how can we say that we have a true relationship with him? So may we walk out in boldness today, give with the hope of Jesus, with the boldness that Jesus gives us. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this church. I thank you so much for this community. I thank you so much for your love and your peace that you bring. And Father, I ask that your presence is known to us, that we know it like your voice, that we know your voice in, 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 in hope and in love, God, that we understand who you are and that we can pray bold prayers and that we can have courage to go back into the places that we aren't supposed to be as Christians, as followers of Christ. God, give us boldness to, to speak your name to those, our family members that may not know you, our friends that may not know you. May you give us courage, Lord, to go to the places that nobody wants to go to. Father, move us forward. Father, help us continue to be your church, not just in Davison, but across the world. Father, I thank you so much for your hope and your love and your peace. God, may we go in boldness. May we have courage to do your will. Amen. Stay with us. Even 
when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life. I won't turn back, I know you are near, and I will fear no evil. For my God is with me, and if my God is to have courage 
to do things that we don't want to do. May we go in peace and boldness and in faith today. Have a great Sunday, everybody.